Well, good Tuesday. It's another Cool Tips Tuesday with JP here at Brizzy. And today we're going to show you how to make this fall off shadow. You may think, come on, I know there are shadows in Brizzy. Why show me this? But you're going to see this one is a special shadow. First thing you have to understand is that this shadow has corners here at the bottom. Well, it's kind of shrinking in. It's not just to the bottom and to the left. So it creates this fall off effect at the bottom or maybe a shadow that falls backwards with the lightning pointing from the front. And the other thing, it's very subtle in this one. Let me show you if I hover over it, look what happens to the shadow, right? It's really super subtle. And that is that it disperses a little bit more, creating a nice hover effect to these three columns that we have here, the real deal, the raw deal, and the new deal. Well, let's look at the real deal for this, and we go into our builder. So you see, I've got these two ready, and then I'm going to apply it to this one, both in the normal state and then in the hover state. To access the shadow, well, the shadow is in many elements available, but we apply the shadow to the column in this example. So we go over here until we see the blue bounding box of the column, click on the settings, and shadows are available under colors. And then you see over here, shadow click on that. And down here, these are the settings for your shadows. So what I want to show you first, and let's leave it here on black with the color picker. You will see every time I hover over one of these, there's a little icon here on the left that shows you what each one is about. So if I go here to the second one from the left, you see four arrows pointing north, east, south, and west. And that's going to basically act like a border. I'll click on it and let's type in a value that I already have here, 12. And then you will see what will happen by adding 12. So I can see over here, I've already put my opacity for the color at 75% and I will leave it there. I don't like hard shadows, which means, you know, take it all the way to black. I'll rather reduce it a little bit, give it a little bit of a tint of a gray. So I'm going to put it at 75%. I can even take it lower. Let's leave it at 75%. Uh, it, there we go. Right, so this is what happens. It gives you basically a border all around. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the opposite of that. I'm going to shrink the border by minus 12 pixels, or I'm going to shrink it by 12 pixels. So I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to double click and then type in minus 12. And you'll think it had disappeared, but it didn't. It is now behind this element. It's minus 12 pixels from all the sides, from the top, from the right, from the left, uh, from the bottom and from the left. To show you that, these two, this moves it all the way to the top and bottom, and this moves it to the left and the right. So what I want it to do is to bring that box that we have now behind it to the bottom. I'll type in 12 and you will see nothing happens. And the reason nothing happens is because I've reduced the entire shadow box by 12 pixels and I've added 12 pixels at the bottom so you cannot see it. It's exactly there at the bottom now. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here in Chrome so that you can see what I'm... Whoa, 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 whoa. What I'm going to do next, bring it in here. Okay, good. Tiny bit smaller. I'm accessing it again. Let's go to our settings and our border, shadow. And now I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard. So to increase it, I use the up arrow key. To decrease it, I use the down arrow key. I'm going to increase it by just one pixel, 13 pixels. And you should see exactly there, do you see one pixel sticking out? If I make it 14, another pixel. And I'm going to increase that all the way to 20 pixels. So effectively, 20 minus 12, we've got eight pixels of that shadow sticking out at the bottom. And that's how I get it to move out at the bottom with that white corners on both the left and the right. To create the shadow, you have to disperse it. And this is the first one here on the left. And I've also have a value here of 12, which I'm going to type in. And there we have that effect. See, great. Next, what I'll do is I'll go to the hover settings and I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to type in the 12 minus 12 and 20. Oh, and this is 12, right? 12 minus 12 and 20. Of course, it's exactly the same effect, so nothing's going to change. And all we do in the hover state is we increase this disperse effect. So I'm going to put that at 25 which makes it even more blurry. Then 
If I go back to the original and I hover over it, you can see that's how we get that nice fall off shadow at the bottom. Hope you can use this somewhere on the website. It's a very nice and subtle shadow to apply. It always gives a little bit depth and foundation when you use boxes or info boxes. And I think a very nice effect to have, especially if you apply that subtle hover effect for it within the desktop view. See you next Tuesday again for another cool tips Tuesday here on Brizzy.